The Amazing Mr. Malone. <laughs> Operator. Operator, get me the office of John J. Malone. The American Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone, an exciting half hour of mystery created by Craig Rice and starring Frank Lovejoy. Our locale is the city of Chicago, the time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures, The Amazing Mr. Malone. Malone is the name John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. And tonight I'd like to turn the spotlight on the old cliche, cleanliness is next to godliness. As a case in point, I give you Tony Milano. Mr. Milano is one of Chicago's biggest operators. He runs half a dozen nightclubs in town. And rumor has it if you're bent on a little more action, Mr. Milano can accommodate you there, too. Of course, to run an enterprise of this kind, he needs help. And that's where Georgie Kelk comes in. Kelk is his right-hand man, but Tony never believes in letting his right hand know what his left hand is doing. Which no doubt explains Georgie's bafflement as he walks into Milano's private office with a nondescript little man in tow. Here he is, Tony. Is he the one? Yeah. Grimes, this is Mr. Milano. Uh, Gee, it's a great pleasure, Mr. Milano. Uh, Wait till I tell my missus. You're not going to tell your missus anything. Huh? This is strictly between us, Grimes. You know what I mean? Oh, sure, Mr. Milano. Anything you uh, say... Just to step back a little like a good fella, huh? What? Mr. Milano doesn't like people breathing into his face. It uh, spreads the germs. Know what I mean? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Did the Georgie tell you what I wanted? Uh, no. How could I? I didn't know myself. I was saving it for a surprise. Mr. Grimes... You're the janitor of the Bellmore Apartments, you know? Uh, janitor? Oh, no, I'm the superintendent. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I mean the superintendent. You got a tenant living there named uh, Reed? Y- you mean Jack Reed? Oh, you bet. He's a swell as... He's a Mr. Grimes. and not so close. Oh, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, now, how about you letting me and Mr. Kelke here in Jack's apartment? Oh, I, I couldn't do that, Mr. Milano. That wouldn't be right. I give you a hundred bucks. What? All you got to do is loan me your pass key. Uh, no, no. Two hundred. Could... Well... All I want is the key for just one hour. Oh, uh, what are you going to do in Mr. Reed's apartment? Oh, nothing that will get you into trouble. You said uh, three hundred? I said the two, but I'll let you chisel me. Okay, Mr. Milano. You, you want to shake on it? If you don't mind, uh, let's just say it's uh, a deal. Huh? Mr. Milano doesn't believe in shaking hands. Oh, oh, James. You know what I mean. Give Mr. Kelk the key. <laughs> Mr. Reed does all right for himself. Tony, I don't approve of this whole idea. There are a lot of things I don't approve of, Georgie, but I don't let them make me unhappy. For Pete's sake, That's boss, enough. you got to... See if there's anything in the desk. All right. Hey. Hey, will you take a look at this? You got something? Yes, indeedy. Jack obviously doesn't believe in banks. I bet there's close to uh, to 20 G's in his bundle. Put that back. Oh, I just... Put that we... back. Okay. Hey, hmm? what's, what's this thing here? Oh, well, that's a rabbit's foot. A rabbit's foot? Yeah, it's supposed to bring you luck. But what's this charm attached to it? It, uh... Oh, the Jack Reed from Gene. With this and me, you can't lose. Who's a Gene? Oh, it must be the gal whose picture's on the piano. The... Hey, that's what I call a good-looking girl. Find out... Who she is and where she lives. Yeah. And uh, put that rabbit's foot in your handkerchief. What for? I want it. 
Now, look, Tony, this whole thing here, well, it doesn't cost a half a buck. Maybe, but it's worth a half a million to me. Wrap it up, Georgie, or we take it home. <laughs> Why, if it isn't my old pal, Tony Milano. Have you been, you son of a gun? Put her there. If you don't mind, Chris. Oh, you and your germs. You know Georgie Kerr. Of course. How are you, Georgie? Fine. Uh, sit down, gents. You, uh, you're not too busy? I'm never too busy for you, Tony, but you know how it is. When you're a politician, your time isn't your own. You're always out slaving for your constituents. Slaving for constituents? Yeah. Uh, what's the matter? Anybody giving you trouble? Yeah. Who? You just say the word Jack and... Jack Reed. What? I said the Jack Reed. He opened up a place two blocks from mine. Oh, well, I'll take care of that. Well, I'll shut him up so fast that... Who do you think you're kidding? Well, I, I don't understand. Reed couldn't operate five minutes without you. Are you insinuating yeah. that... Hold on. Now, cut it out, Tony. You know, if someone was to walk in now, they wouldn't realize you're kidding. I'll tell you what we'll you do. You ain't going to do anything, Christy. When I buy somebody, I expect him to work only for me. You know what I mean? Oh, for, for, for Pete's sake, man. You don't realize what you're doing. I've got a wife and two kids. They get by on your insurance. Tony, please, you've got to listen to me. You're breathing in my face, Christy. It's a very unsanitary... You've got to give me a break. I swear I'll straighten this whole thing out. I'll talk to Reed. I'll... Uh, It took you long enough, Tony. What were you waiting for? I just want to hear what he's got to say. Where's that uh, rabbit's foot we got from Jack Reed's apartment? Oh, here it is. Put in his hand. Okay. Maybe it will bring Mr. Christie luck where he's gone. Hey, Sam, let's get to that flugel oh, street. Ah, you right. got that step all wrong, Marge. I'll show you. Hey, Rex, give me the wang wang blues. I want to show Marge that break. Now watch, honey. That's it, that's it. Hey, mister. Go away, but I'm busy. Now what, Marge? <laughs> mister. Are you still here? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Milano. I I didn't recognize you. That's all right. You got a girl singer in the show named uh, Jean? Jean Patterson? Yeah, that's the one. She around? Yeah. Uh, would you like me to show you her dressing room? I appreciate it. Oh, that's okay, Tony. But what? Oh, I... I mean, Mr. Milano. Say, uh, you wouldn't have a spot for a hoofer in one of your clubs, no. would you? I just thought I'd ask. No harm trying, you know. This it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Gene! Gene, uh, you decent? What do you want? Uh, you got company. Just a second. Hello. Who are you? Tony Milano. Well, I'm glad to be of some service, Mr. Milano. Hey, Rex, wait a minute. I want to see you. Well, are you... You're going to invite me in? Why should I? Well, it's awfully drafty standing here. You know, that's how most people catch a cold. What do you want, Mr. Milano? Just to get acquainted. You see, I saw your picture somewhere, Jean. Jean? You can call me... Tony. Not really. What's the matter, Jean? Don't you want to be my friend? Well, it's a wonderful offer, Mr. Milano. But you see, I already got one. Oh. You mean uh, Jack Reed? Who told you about me and Jack? I got his spies. Well, I don't know where they pick up their information, but apparently it's from a reliable source. So you see, We I... can't be friends. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Milano, but if you care to leave your name and address... You will let me know if there's an opening. Well, I wouldn't hold my breath if I were you. Oh, that's all right. When I see something I like, I'm a very, very patient man. Goodbye, Jean. Don't forget. Don't forget to give me a call. Oh, 
no, no, it can't be. No, but it is. Well, how are you, Lieutenant? Fine, fine. Don't let me stop you playing. Oh, I was just toying around. Hey, uh, what brings you here? Can't you guess? <laughs> I told that jerk so for am I not to pluck me the plug. It's a little tougher rap than that, Jack. Ever see this rabbit's foot before? May I? I'm afraid not. But I'll be glad to read you the inscription on the charm. It says, to Jack Reed from Jean. With this and me... Where'd you get that, Lieutenant? Oh, then it is yours. Not necessarily. Come on, Jack. There's no use being cagey. I already checked it with the jeweler. He told me it was bought a couple of weeks ago by a girl named Jean Patterson. Where'd you find it? In the one place we shouldn't. You know Chuck Christie? The boss of the Pelham District? Yeah, only Mr. Christie just got himself a new territory. I think we've had enough riddles for tonight. He was murdered at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Well? Well, right near the body, we found your trinket. Looks like losing that foot was the worst possible luck for you and that rabbit. Let's go, Jack. I got a car downstairs. <laughs> You are listening to the amazing Mr. Malone. Today, more than ever before, Americans must be made to realize that freedom and the rights of the common man are a precious heritage. History has proved that people start to lose their freedom the moment they think it's forever secure. That's why we must all work at keeping our American heritage of freedom, for freedom is everybody's job. As a good citizen, remember your American heritage and work to defend your individual liberties. Do this by taking a more actual part in the affairs of your community and in fulfilling at all times the duties of American citizenship. Now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. And that's where yours truly got into the act and without even seeing the script... For six hours after the arrest of Jack Reed for the murder of Chuck Christie, I was pounding the pillow at home. I was right in the midst of a horrible nightmare. An ape-like face was bending over mine, tickling my throat with a razor. And suddenly I made an interesting discovery. It was no dream. Come on, Malone. Get up. You're uh, asking the impossible, comrade. If I ever moved now, I'd be minus a head. And you know something? I'd look better without it. You put that razor away. Do I look weak-minded? You don't expect me to answer that while you're caressing my throat. Well, you shouldn't blame me, Malone. I know. I got the skin you love to clutch. Say, you're a regular vaudeville show, ain't you? Yeah, ain't I? What's your name, friend? Rube Gelder. Rube Gelder? Yeah. I work for Jack Reed. You know him? I know him. Well, early tonight, the police picked him up for the murder of Chuck Christie. The politician? Yeah. It's a lucky thing for that cop I wasn't around. Otherwise? Otherwise, I would have broken his back before I let him walk off with the boss. What's this all got to do with me? Well, I love that guy. When Jack says to me, Rube, go out and get a lawyer. You decided to give me the business. Yeah. You say you're the best mouthpiece in Chicago. Though it don't seem possible. It isn't. Well, we'll soon know. Now, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get dressed and go down to see Jack, and you're going to get him out. Am I? Well, you'd better. Did it ever occur to you once I'm out of your sight, I might tell this story to the police? And did it ever occur to you that it might occur to me to visit you some other night with this razor? Only next time I might not bother to wake you up? I see what you mean. Then what are you waiting for, Malone? Get going. Now, of all the idiotic stunts, wait till I get my hands on Rube, so help me, Malone. No, no, don't upset him. Well, I, I want you to know I never suggested that piece of business to him. I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> What a schmo. He seems awfully fond of you. Oh, he's nuts. I don't know why I keep him around. I, I'm sorry you got in your hair, Malone. That's all right. Lieutenant! What are you calling him for? I thought you were ready to go. Don't you want me for a lawyer? Well, sure, but I figured... Oh, forget you... it. Now, did you kill Christie? Why should I? But the police have a pretty convincing theory. They believe Christie was selling you protection for your club. So? So maybe Christie was told to close you up. By whom? Tony Milano. Why couldn't Tony have killed Christie? Well, he could have. Only there are a couple of things that argue against it. One, Tony had Christie in his hip pocket. You don't generally destroy what you control. But there's even a stronger argument than that. What? The rabbit foot they found near Christie's body. Oh, that's a frame. You generally carry it with you? No, I don't believe in that stuff. Last I saw of it, it was in my desk. 
Anybody else have a key to your apartment? Nope. Oh, that's just dandy. About this gal who gave you the rabbit's foot, what's her name? Jean Patterson. You think this Jean No, might... no, I want her kept out of this, Malone. Well, you're asking the impossible, She's Jack. got nothing to do with this. Suppose you let me decide that for myself. Lieutenant! I want out! <laughs> Yes? Hello, Jean. Do I know you? No, but that can be easily remedied. My name is Malone. And you heard me singing one night and you decided I was the girl of your dreams. No, not quite. You say I'm a lawyer. Well, when I want to sue somebody, Mr. Malone... Oh, don't call me. I'll be tied up with Jack Reed. Jack Reed? Didn't you see this morning's papers? No. They're holding him for the murder of a politician named Christie. Maybe you better come in. Thanks. Now, what's this all about? Well... You see, this Christie... I'm not interested in that. How am I involved? Well, they found a rabbit's foot you gave Jack near the body. You listen to me, Malone. I didn't even know Christie... No one says you did, Jean. All I'm hoping to accomplish... Don't tell me your plans. I'm not interested. Jack's got some nerve ringing me into this. Well, in all fairness to him, lover, it wasn't Jack's idea. Don't tell me it was yours. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Malone. This is just the kind of publicity I love. You don't seem to realize your boyfriend's in a jam. He may go to the chair. Well, I'm awful sorry for Jack. What about me? What about you? I got my career to think of, and if you'll excuse me, Mr. Malone, I'll give it some thought right now. All right, all right. Take it easy. Yeah? Is Mr. Milano in? Oh, you're Gene Patterson, aren't you? Would you mind telling Mr. Milano I'd like to see him? He isn't here. Well, when do you expect him? Uh, never. Now, if I were you, sister, Who I'd... Who is it, Georgie? It's nobody, boss. I'll it's be right... It's me, a... Tony. What? It's Gene. Oh. Hello, Miss Patterson. It was Gene the last time. Yeah, but you say then you don't want to be friends. Can't I change my mind? Should I throw her out, Tony? You crazy? Jeannie, come on in. Thanks. Say, this is quite a place. <laughs> Nicer than uh, Jack Reed's? Well, different. Who picked out this color scheme? You don't like uh, white? Reminds me of a hospital. It's very antiseptic. Oh, yeah, of course, I forget. Sit down, baby, sit down. Uh, maybe, maybe you'd like a drink, eh? Huh? Yeah, but yeah. well, there's something else I'd like first. Well, you just name it. A little privacy. All right, Georgie, you heard the lady. What's the matter with you, Tony? Go on and beat it. Jeannie and I got a lot of things to... Discuss. Are you crazy? How do you know she wasn't sent here by Malone? Go on, sister, blow. You gonna let him talk to me like that, Tony? Now listen, sister, I know all Shut about Shut up! You. Now get out. Okay, Tony. I'll see you around. Don't bother. Why, Mr. Milano, you're all right. That dirty low life. Look. Look what he did to my knuckles. Oh, oh you caught him. Maybe I can make it. Better. No, no, no. We mustn't take a chance on infection. You, you sit there, baby. Tony, be right back. And then we're going to have a nice long talk. Hey, son, is he judging? Oh, never mind. Hello, Rube. How can we talk, Malone? What's wrong with this? Well... I did like you told me. I followed that Jean Patterson, and where do you suppose she went? Where? To see Tony Milano. Tony Milano? You sure about that, Rube? I swear on my mother's grave. I wonder where they first met. Well, it couldn't be so long ago. Jean's been going with Jack ever since she came into Chicago. Uh, what happened? Well, they got long swell. The boss was nuts no. about her. I'm in Milano's apartment. Oh, well, how should I know? I'm no peeping, Tom. Oh, yeah, a couple of minutes after she walked in, Georgie Kelp came out. Tony's boy? Yeah, uh, he was rubbing his jaw. Sounds like they might have had trouble. Well, what do you think, Malone? You did all right, Rube. Let's hope I can do as well. Well, there it is, Lieutenant. What more can you want? A little proof. For it's as thing. obvious as a hole in your head. Tony framed Jack Reed. Why? Could be for a million reasons. Oh, I love how you throw those figures around. Well, it's true. Now, suppose Tony had a yen for Gene Patterson. So he kills a politician he has in his pocket. Just to get rid of Reed. All right, maybe that came later. Maybe Tony didn't have Christie in his pocket. We know Christie was selling him out. 
How do we know that? Well, Jack was still operating. He couldn't do it without Christie's help. You're changing horses in midstream. Yeah, yeah. Well, the more I think about it, I bet it's the real reason. Milano had an exclusive on Christie's services. When Christie double-crossed him, Tony put him away. And what about that rabbit's foot? I don't know where Milano got his hands on that, but if you work hard enough, you'll find the answer. You're amazing, Mr. Malone. <laughs> where am I? Yeah, you're making sense for a change. And you believe my client was framed? Yeah, the only thing that bothers me is how to prove it. Well, Georgie Kelk must have been along with Tony at the time of the killing. You don't think Georgie talk? He might if you staged it, right? What do you mean? Let Jack Reed go. Are you stark raving? It's our only chance. What do you think will happen when Tony finds out the police no longer suspect Jack Reed? What? I don't know either. Let's find out. Come on in, darling. I'll be ready in just a minute. Hello, Jean. Jack. What's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? Well, of course, darling. It's just... Well, that's such a surprise. Well, that Malone's quite a lawyer. Then they know you didn't kill Christy. That was my impression. Well, who did? What's the matter, Gene? You're thinking of hedging again? I don't get you, Jack. I heard about you and Mr. Milano. You what? Mm Mm-hmm. Rube filled me in on the gory details. Oh, listen, Jack, you gotta believe me. I was only doing it for you. Oh, baby. I mean it. I thought I could trap Tony to make him some admission. <laughs> I've got to hand it to you, Jean. That's a, that's a nice piece of ad libbing. Ah, oh, darling, when I cross you. You'd cross your own grandmother if you thought it would do you any good. What are you going to do now, baby? It's only a question of time before they pick up your new meal ticket. You think you're so smart. Well, Tony's twice the man you are. Good for him. You think he's going to take this laying down? No, what's he going to do? You just watch and see, Mr. Reed. You just watch and see. <laughs> Huh? Brooks. I never would have known. How we doing, Lieutenant? Great. What do you mean? That plan of yours is working like a million. Letting Jack Reed go certainly started the ball rolling. What did I tell you? You certainly did. I'll bet Tony Milano doesn't know where he's at. Mm, probably not. <laughs> what about Georgie Kelk? You hear from him? Yeah, about ten minutes ago. I figured he'd be scared, silly. What did he have to say? Not very much. Why won't he talk? For two reasons. One, he ain't in the mood. And two, he's got a bullet through his head. I want to see you, Malone. You are listening to the amazing Mr. Malone. Everybody knows about today's critical housing shortage and the various reasons for this shortage. But there are many people who do not think of one very important contributing factor, forest fires. Last year, forest fires burned enough trees of saw timber to build about 86,000 five-room homes. Nine out of every ten forest fires are man-made. Most of these man-caused fires are due to plain carelessness. And that's why everyone, therefore, should follow these simple rules of forest fire prevention. Crush out cigarette, cigar, and pipe ashes. Break matches in two after using. And drown all campfires. Remember, you are a potential firebug, so be careful. Now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Twenty minutes later, I was down at headquarters. When I walked into Lieutenant Brooks' office, the first one I noticed was my client, Jack Reed. He didn't say anything, he just shook his head sadly and motioned toward the desk. Then I saw Brooks... It's lucky I did, because he was sighting a revolver at me. Well, if it isn't the amazing Mr. Malone. I got a good mind. You haven't got a good mind, and put down that gun. If you had any brains, I swear I'd blow them up. What happened? You tell him, Jack. Well, I, uh, I went up to Georgie Kelk's place about 8.30 tonight. Now, what did you do that for? I told you to stay away. Yeah, yeah, I see now it was a mistake. Anyway, Georgie was certainly surprised. I think if I'd had five minutes more, I would have gotten the whole story. Well? Well, Suddenly, the door opened. All I saw was an arm and a gun. I yelled to Georgie to get down, but I was a little late. It was a shot. A second later, someone tossed that rod into the room and almost brained me. That the gun there? Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah, what about the... Fingerprints. Area one. It's as clean as a baby's thoughts. Whose gun is it? It's 
Mine? What? Yeah, yeah, it's an old one I had in my apartment. Well, how did it... Well, how did my rabbit's foot get near Christie's body? Here we go again. Listen, Lieutenant, you looked into that angle? Uh-huh. What's the story? The superintendent of the house, a boy named Grimes, has the only pass key. You think this Grimes might have done business with Tony Milano? We're checking that now. Well, when you finish, give us a call. We'll be over at Tony's. <laughs> Jack. What are you worried about, Jeannie? I know Jack, too. Yeah, but you don't understand. Malone got him out. He's a pretty good lawyer. Now you listen to me, Doc. You got nothing to worry about. Didn't Tony say he'd take care of you? I know you will, darling. It's only that... Yes? Hello, Tony. Malone. Jean and I was just talking about you. Well, I appreciate that. You know Jack Reed, don't you? Jack? Sure. How are you, fellow? He's the boy, Malone. (laughs) I'm a water boy. Uh, Where were you around 8.30 tonight? Why? That's the time Georgie Kelk was murdered. Not a good old Georgie. Yes, a good old Georgie. You got an alibi for that time? Yeah, yeah. I was right here. Uh And, of course, Gene's your witness. That's right. Now, look, I don't want to be involved. Sure, you got your career to What's the matter, doll? Don't you remember? We were sitting right there. You're lying, Tony. You sound like you can prove it, Jack. I can't. He's the one who shot Kelk. You're out of your mind. You didn't see his face. No, I didn't have to. You see that bandage he's got on his knuckles? Where did you pick that up, Tony? None of your business. I'll tell you. Shut up. He hit Kelk when Kelk insulted me. I didn't think that was possible. Go on, Jack. What about the bandage? Well, when he tossed the gun into the room, I noticed You're a liar. I don't think so. Whoa! Come in, Lieutenant. How did you make out? Couldn't be better. Superintendent admits he sold Tony here the use of the passkey for 300 bucks. What do you say, Milano? Nothing until I see a lawyer. What's wrong with me? You mean... You mean you take my case? Well, it all depends. I think I could get you off of Georgie's murder. Are you out of your mind, Malone? Don't you think I can, Jack? No. Ah, you're just saying that because you killed him. He what? Let's have that again. What for, Jack? You got it the first time. You killed Georgie Kelk. I don't know how you do it, Malone. Shall I tell you a secret, Lieutenant? No, you don't either. All right, what's the real story? Well, it all comes down to Jack Reed's idea of poetic justice. He thought once we figured that Tony killed Christy and planted that rabbit's We'd foot... We'd figure Georgie Kelk's murder was the same routine all over again. That's it. What convinced you otherwise? Jack's gun. Why was that any different from the rabbit's foot? Remember you told me there were no fingerprints on it? Oh, there weren't. Well, obviously then, Georgie's killer had to be wearing gloves. How do you arrive at that? Jack claimed he chucked the rod into the room right after the shot, taking no time to wipe it off. So? So, later... Jackie said he knew Tony was the man because he spotted him by that bandage on his knuckles. But if the murderer wore gloves, how could you see a bandage? You couldn't. Oh. See how simple it is? Well, being simple-minded yourself must help you a great deal. Yes, it does. When you work up to that state, you'll find out. Hmm. Well, you know who I'm sorry for? Yeah. Jean Patterson. No, I wasn't thinking of her. Well, I was. Ah, poor girl. She tried to play both ends against the middle. Mm. Wound up with nothing. I beg your pardon. Where are you going? Well, I, uh... I owe Jean something for putting away both her friends. Maybe I can further her career. Good night, Lieutenant. Ever hear the story of the blase character who thought nothing could surprise him until he tried murder, and then he was shocked to death? I'll fill you in on all the details next week, so why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. Frank Lovejoy was starred as John J. Malone. Our program was written by Gene Wang with direction by Bill Rousseau. Music by Rex Corey. The Amazing Mr. Malone is produced by Bernard L. Schubert. And now this is Dresser Dahlstedt inviting you to tune in next week. The events and characters depicted in this story were entirely fictional, and any resemblance to actual places or people, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. The amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.